Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, we thank you this morning for our hosts. Thank you for their lives. Thank you for teacher, uh, for Minister Richmond and then um, Minister Karen Phillips. Thank you for Apostle Antoinette. And thank you for teacher Kevin. Thank you for their lives and thank you for all those who stay on the line to pray for all of us all through the week. Lord, we're so grateful to you. Thank you for we know you're a prayer answering God. You have answered our prayers. We give you praise and we exalt you. Lord, speak to us this morning and not just to us, Lord, but to everyone who will have this message listened to afterwards. Or who we share it, Father, we pray as it spreads round, Lord, you get your remnants quickened in the inner man to, re to realize we are in the last days and get ourselves ready. Thank you, precious Redeemer, for you have heard and answered us in Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Yesterday we started with, um, we looked at the parable of the wheat and the tares. And the Lord helped us to go through it. But there's something the Lord wants to really touch this morning. I, you know, we, I thought intended we carry on with another parable. But, you know, the Lord has been ministering since yesterday and says, Look, go back to Matthew chapter 13 and verse 27. And that is why 27 and 28, brethren, is where we will dwell today. And the Bible said there, or we read up to 30. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tears? You know, the Lord was just speaking yesterday and says, You've done well. Um, if we go through everything according to the scriptures and then go in and dig deep and dig deep brethren we can do the wheat and the tares for the rest of the year because there's quite a lot in it but the lord says specifically go back to 27 to 30 and there's something i want to show you the servants there said to him sir didst thou not sow good seed in thy field from whence then hard it tares he said unto them, and unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to them to bond them. But gather the wheat unto my Bam. So, brethren, key thing the Lord wants us to, we are going to look at today is, number one, the servants said to him. So, it's about, one, the servants, and two, let them grow together. These are the two things we're going to pick up this morning. The servants noticed, so, were able to know, and then two, the, 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 the Lord said to them, leave both of them to grow together. So the key lesson is that the servants recognized the tares. They were able to recognize tares, brethren. If we are very close, if we are the servants of the Lord, he took his time with the disciples three and a half years, teaching them, showing them deep things, explaining you know, when he finishes, they'll come back to him and say, Master, explain to us this parable. Can you tell us what this? They were so close. And the reason for being so close was to learn, was to see. They sucked with him. They slept with him. They saw all the, uh, all, all the blasphemy and all the things. They saw all the accusations. They saw all the persecutions with him. And they heard him. They thought him. They saw his life. Brethren, at that point, when he was leaving, his time to go, there was nothing else to move these disciples. Nothing. Because they've seen everything. They will not hear any rumor anymore, and they want to go. They will not hear gossip, and they want to go. 
There was nothing. When Remember when he said to Peter, will you also go? Peter said, where are we going? You have the word of eternal life. Brethren, this is where the Lord wants us to come. So that the scribes and the Pharisees will not deceive us anymore. The scribes and Pharisees could have no impetus on the disciples because they were with him. They were so close. When he left them and went back to heaven, they were not afraid of persecutions. They were not afraid of what the Romans would do to them. They were not afraid, you know, we, we looked at here how all of them died. They were not afraid of death anymore because they have been with the Lord. So brethren, the Bible says the Lord, our Lord warned us very well before he left. He left, he warned us in Matthew chapter 7, 15 and 23. He said, beware of false prophets. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of tongues of figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good fruit cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every fruit that bringeth forth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not every one that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. Brethren, it is the fruit that is the matter. It is the fruit. You will know the, the fruits. We may be deceived at first, but the Holy Spirit in us will reveal who do these tears are if you take magic to you know to prophesy to people any one of you take magic to prophesy to people it means the person is a tear if you are in ministry for gain it means the person is a tear if you are in worldliness and leading others to licentiousness the person is a tear they recognized it and our lord told us look don't the most important thing is may you all of us, the servants of our Yeshua, can we recognize the taste? These servants were able to recognize them. And that is the big thing for us today. It's not about the prophecy. Anyone could stand. All we hear all along today is, I prophesy to you, I prophesy to you. I was discussing to Apostle. I said, all through from beginning till when the Lord left. There was no place it is written. And he came and says, I prophesy to you. All he keeps saying to fulfill the prophecy which was written. This all I prophesy to you. I prophesy to you who do not know the word. The word do not have root in themselves. And people are running around going for prophecies that are coming from the flesh. Look what the Bible said about them. They will say, did I not cast out evils? And all you hear them is, I cast out these demons, I do this, I prophesy to you. But their personal life is zero. Absolutely zero. Their lives, their thoughts, their characters, absolutely zero. They can't even overcome. But they come out on the pulpits and everywhere I prophesy to you. And they are screaming and they are shouting and people are running to them. If you are running to them, you are not one of those servants who can recognize tears. The Lord says, by their fruits. Brethren, let's go back to the fruits. The fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of righteousness. The fruit of meekness. The fruit of holiness. The fruit of peace. Joy. The fruit that desires nothing but to please the master. The fruit that you will hear it even on the pulpit. You're listening to a man of God, to a woman of God. All you hear is the desire to please God, to draw us closer to him, to run from this wicked life. All we hear is how we will live a victorious Christian life. But brethren, today when you go to such, such churches, people say it's boring. Oh, all they talk about is this. What about life? 
brethren, as I said yesterday, and not me saying it, as the Bible said, if only in this life we have hope, who be of all men most miserable? It doesn't make any sense again. What will it profit us to gain this life? To gain it for now? And all people are running to is all the prophecies, all the this and all the that. These are tears that are hollow, that can't hold water. They, can't, they don't even know the scripture. They can't even explain it. They can't even take their time to pray out the will of God. The subdued Christian life that exudes or that brings out the, the rightful life. That brings out humility. When you see these boasters, they are very proud. They want to show off and people are running. And all they want to see is, I prophesy to you. Let's read what the Bible says in Matthew 24, verse 24. For these, for there shall arise false prophets, and false, and false, and for there shall arise false Christ, and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were not possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Brother, this place is very scary. The very elect is you and I. And the scriptures is saying, our Yeshua himself is telling you and I that these false prophets will arise. They shout more than we do. They, they have all the money. They have the studio. They have all the platforms. They do. You know, when I watch the younger prophet, the younger ministers trying to imitate them and to follow them, I said to them, you don't know what you're trying to do. You're playing with fire. For our God is a consuming fire. For he's seeing the heart and what is in your heart and what you want to do and intend. The Bible says there will arise. Every servant of Yeshua, please know it, that there will arise in the last days. False Christ, not only false Christ, but false prophets. And sure, they will have great signs and wonders. We have them all around us, brethren. They do all sorts of things. They buy Ribena, they mix it with water, and people are buying and they're drinking. They are giving them red handkerchief, yellow handkerchief, green handkerchief. They are all over on the televisions giving false testimonies. And then all they want to hear, when you hear those testimonies, brethren, you know, Apostle and I were talking yesterday night. I said, how come that you will sit under a false prophet for two seconds and you wouldn't know? Brethren, the Holy Spirit that lives in us will immediately detect it. You don't need anyone to tell you. Five minutes into the message, you will know they are hollow. You know they have nothing they are saying. Listening to testimonies, all the man of God is doing is to listen. Uh -huh. What did you say? And so, so this happened and this happened. They are glorifying themselves. They are trying to show the world what they can do. And the Lord is warning us and every remnant. Go away from them. Brethren, so it is not about prophecy, but the life. An unbroken man cannot hold any water. Bankers are so much taught to recognize the good money, so much that when they touch the fake, they know it immediately. They only need to touch it. They know it in many. How many have studied the scriptures so well, like the Berean Christians, to check out the fake? If the people of the world have taught themselves how what a good money is like, that when you touch the fake immediately, you will know it in the bank. How much more we, the children of God, who should know so much know the scriptures in and out, that when we hear the fake, we will know immediately. Acts chapter 17, 20, 10 to 12 said, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming theater went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble. Amen. The Bible says they were more noble than those in Thessalonica. In that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Brethren, this is where we should be. These were the Berean Christians. How many years ago? More than a thousand seven hundred years ago. More than a thousand eight hundred years ago. The Bible says that these Berean Christians, they were more noble. 
that even the great Paul, after talking, these Berean Christians will take their Bible to sit down and check if it were so. Therefore, many of them believed also of honorable women of which were Greeks and of men, not a few. My prayer is today, all of us will go back to the Bible. Because that's what is giving Satan room to do everything he's doing. Even the great Pope, brethren, as I said, the problem is that satanic, you know, the, the, is the satanic, uh, you know, attack of laziness. Laziness to open the Bible. People can take their course, they can tweet, they can Facebook, they can do their mails, read it, but they sleep when it comes to reading the Bible. Brethren, an enemy has done this. Why men slept? The enemy has done this. Why will we talk and tweet and write and do this? But to read our scriptures. No wonder these false prophets are able to come into the church and deceive everyone and they leave. They are coming, they come into the church and extort. They are having all this false prophecy. Most of us, all you want to hear on Facebook is, I prophesy to you. Your enemy will not do this. Amen. And you click Amen. Go and read your Bible. Can someone tell me, I'm praying for you that today you live a Christ, victorious Christian life. That you will separate yourself from the world. That you have nothing to do with the world. That your life will reflect the life of holiness in Yeshua. That when Jesus comes today, you will be, you will be raptured. Such messages don't come again. Because they know what to do. To, to, they know what to do to twist. And they know what to do to kick off something in people's hearts. And they go for it. Brethren, the teal staff also, as I said, the bankers, what of the teal staff? They have a pen, a, a marker that is given to them. Once you give them any currency, especially the higher currencies, they will mark, they will mark it. And that pen will dictate fake. But brethren, how many of us today are on our guard doing things, have spiritual markers to dictate fake gospels, to dictate these brethren who and all these false prophets who are not holding any water, but they are in ministry for gain and for what they will get and to be known and to make a name and for pride. They get angry when they hear all these things. But in Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible says, let the word of the Lord dwell richly in you. That's number one secret on how to dictate these things among us. Number one secret is let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Brethren, you can't be in this state and anybody will come to tell you stories. You can't be singing in your heart. And the word of Christ dwell richly in you. Dwell guiding you in all truth. You want to go to this place. He said, no, you can't go there. Somebody offends you, you want to be angry. He says, no, be careful, be angry, but sin not. Somebody does things that offends you so much. He says, remember, 70 times 7. Somebody thinks happens to you and you want to feel so low. He says, no, remember, my joy is your strength. The enemy comes to attack you so much and to bring you down. He says, no, remember, I will see you through. No water will swallow you. No fire will swallow you. You want to get discouraged and said, what is it all about? He says, no, don't worry. I'm coming very soon. The word of Christ that dwells richly in you directs you in all things, puts you through. Brethren, so when you stand there and you hear all these fake preachers talking, what will you do? Quickly you move. You detect them. But because we are not reading, we are not dwelling the word and is not in us anymore in every aspect of our lives, then these fake preachers are having their way. You couldn't even see. What is number two? Secret. The number two secret is in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18, 11 to 18. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devils. Put on the whole armor. If you put on the whole armor as the early apostles did, you will detect them. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers. So when they come to tell you, oh, your mother-in-law will die, all your enemies and all your oldos and all those, you know that they are talking nothing. Absolutely empty words. 
because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and high places we are for. These are what we wrestle against, not physical beings. So when a prophet is telling you, oh, your mother-in-law, oh, these people, oh, those attacking you, and you're saying amen to their death, instead of praying that they may live, when the Bible says, bless and cost not. And they open their mouth wide. Why? Vengeance is in their hearts. And you're allowing them to pour vengeance. When the Lord says, leave it. Vengeance is mine. Don't fight for yourself. And we do. But rather, what the Bible is saying, we are for. Take unto you the whole armor of God. That ye may be able to withstand all in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Having your loins get about with the truth. Guide it about you. That's what the Lord wants us to get busy doing. Brethren, we are so encompassed from every angle that even to go about this is what the enemy is resisting. I'm not, we don't have time for these false and fake people who are all over the place and those who are imitating them. It says, be busy with guiding your loins with, about with truth. Having the breastplate of righteousness, make sure that each time that your breastplate is of righteousness, you pick it up every morning before you leave for work, before you leave out to any day's activity, to school or to anything or to go about, make sure you don't leave the house without your breastplate because the arrows of the enemy are going to shot during the day. These false prophets don't talk about this. You won't hear it from them. What else? And your feet showed with the preparation of the gospel of truth. As you're going out, you say, Lord, I don't know who I'm going to meet. Father, help me. Even when I meet people today, I want, you know, yesterday when Fever and I just, you know, walked out to the town center, I said, Lord, we are going, we're going to meet with people. I say, Fever, get that, those trust. Let's pray that the Lord will help us. Brethren, it was our desire. And then we just, it was an, in the evening, not much people on the streets. Do you know that those who were closing the game, at a point the Lord says, look back. We look back, these two ladies were standing, one was sitting, and they were intently reading the tracts. I say, Father, thank you. Thank you for what you are doing. Brethren, the laborers are few. The harvest is so right. It's so right. Our desire, our everything now should be how we get them and not about these fake pastors. And and the, uh, above all, taking the shield of faith. We are with you shall be able to quench all the fairy dust of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. These fake preachers don't go here. They don't explain this. But brethren, this is the life. Get yourself busy with all these things. Your ears will not hear them. Your eyes will not see them. You will not perceive them. But when you are empty and these things don't fill your life daily, daily, saying, look at my daily Christian life. These false prophets, you will hear them. But my prayer today is that it's time to keep them one side. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, which is the third, um, the third one. The Bible says, Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Brethren, when you hunger and thirst after righteousness, these fake people will not get you because you don't have time for them at all. And all their lofty and big words, and all their screaming and trying gimmickly to get attention, you will notice them. Not at all. You will know them. The Bible says if you really hunger and thirst after righteousness, Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Brethren, when we get ourselves here, no false prophet, no tear will ever come to us because our mind has been renewed we are no more here in this life as our lord yeshua has prayed for us that though we are in the world we are not of this world so these fake pastors are looking for those who are in this world who still care about the earthly things 
Yes, I know some of them have told me in the past, oh, Pastor Grace, what do you mean? Does it mean we can't get this, we can't get that? We can't. Look, my Heavenly Father has taken care of all those. They have. At his appointed time. Brethren, by January this year, we have no clue. From we, it wasn't our anything. Our brethren in the United States says, Oh, Pastor Grace, you need to come this time. For three years, I've not been to the U.S. for any of the conference. But this time, our brethren outside of us planned. And we want to give the Lord praise. That all this time, on, on, under the, you know, president, how can I call it now? The president, you know, presidentship or whatever. Under the time that Apostle Ron and Pastor Janda, Minister Stephanie and the trustees and national advisor and all my beautiful brethren in the United States says no on their own everyone come brethren we don't need to bother the Lord know it those who are serving him and at his appointed time as apostle said it he has enough for our need but not for our greed these fake pastors are getting the greedy those who want it now 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 he says here and having a remnant in first Timothy 6 8 Let's be content. When you are not contented, these fake pastors, the test will get you. They will get you when you are greedy. Their charm will catch you and you will fall prey. Sometimes it's the greediness, the what we want extra, and we hear them. We want to get it and not pay the price. Second Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit, brethren. When the communion of the Holy Spirit is in you. I, brethren, remember what our Yeshua said to us. I am going. I will send you a comforter in John chapter 16, 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever ye shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. When the spirit of Elohim dwells in you, brethren, immediately you will spot out error. Quickly. Because the spirit is in you. Brethren, can we today say, Lord, can let your spirit dwell in me. So that I will not be deceived anymore. So with all these things going on in the internet, on the televisions, and they are back hitting and them shoving about all these fake pastors don't bother yourself let the word of christ dwell in you people are angry they've been deceived you are deceived because you have not allowed the communion of the holy spirit you have not allowed him to dwell if you are dwelled in they will deceive you in the first place you will fall prey for them first john chapter 2 and john chapter 14 26 but the comforter which is the holy spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. First John chapter 2, 27. But the anointing which you have received in him abideth in you. And you need not that any man teach you, brethren. The anointing which you have received. That's what we are saying. You know, some pastors want to stone us when we are saying, you know, the, 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 about that every believer is gifted. Every believer, the Lord has given it to all of us. They want to keep people on the bench to become babies so that it will be easy for them to deceive them. They want people to come and worship them and reverence them. Brethren, don't be there. The scripture is for you. The Bible, the promises are for you. The Bible says here, but the anointing which you have received, you have received that anointing, it will abide in you and it will teach you. don't need any man to teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you all things and is truth and is no lie. And even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. Amen. First Corinthians 12. Verse 10 says, to another, the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another designing of spirits. Why these fake pastors are having their way is because people cannot discern. They, they don't have discernment. That what you're hearing is not the word of Christ. That the girl you're listening to is filled with divination and not the word of God. Don't listen to the bad Jesuses of these days and to the diviners and the necromancers. And the magicians of pharaohs, don't listen to them. They also have signs and miracles, but they are fake. It takes discernment of spirit to actually know it. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. 
For when, for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need to be taught. You have need that one teach you again, which is the first principles of the oracles of God. And have become such as have need of milk. Brethren, let's grow out of babyhood. This milk syndrome. Give me a word. I want a word. When will you start giving orders? When will you have that word in you? When will it dwell richly in you? You don't need to get it any, go out to get it. But it is inside in your heart, brethren. That's where the Lord is saying. So that we will not be drinking milk. How far will milk go? In 1 Peter 2, 2, he says, as newborn births, we should be, if really you want, desire the sincere, which is the word, which is the truth. When you grow out of babyhood, you will not be running around prophecies. Please look for the bones in the word to get stronger. Remember, brethren, this was said of our Yeshua 2,000 years ago. And imagine if this, he told us 2,000 years ago that false prophets will be, imagine the metastasis today. It's like cancer. It would have been pressing the bones and the tissues and the organs of the body today. It would have gone haywire. If this instruction was given 2,000 years ago, I want you to know what it would be like today. It is now smarter. Their Wi-Fi has the best connectivity and reception that their subscribers are in thousands. But be very careful because you will be paying exorbitantly for what the Lord has given to us free of charge. That's how far they go. They're everywhere. You know, and I was writing this, apostle was laughing yesterday night when I told him, I said, their Wi-Fi has best connectivity. They're everywhere. They have people who are talking to them, sending things, going to their churches. You know, they have their hero worships. And their subscribers are all over. That if you're not part of it, you feel. We still remember that many are called few. It is still a few that will enter the narrow gate. Many are going to that broad, the easy way out. The zealous servants asked them, asked to gather them. But the Lord said no. That is the number two we want to look at. The Lord said no. Leave them to grow together. The lesson is, please leave them alone. Teach people to recognize them and shun them. But as for rooting them, you and I will not. Remember, Jesus said to them, he don't because you will hurt the men with when you're doing it. A lot of us, if you go on the internet today, they are saying things about tithe, about offering, about all this. And again, it's hurting the original people. It's rushed, it's hurting the true servants of the Lord because they don't know whether to pay tithes now or not to pay tithes. They don't know whether to give or not to give because all these false prophets, people are attacking them. Brethren, in trying to attack them, you will take away things that the Lord has given. Remember, these false prophets came to exploit our liberty. They came to exploit our liberty. Christianity is life. It's a wonderful life. Life of joy, life of peace, life of forgiveness, life of holiness is different from theirs. When we give, we give to our Father. When we give, we give so that we can, the gospel can continue. When we give, we have our reasons why we're doing. But because these fake pastors has come to extort people, the story is don't give again. You will deny the servants of the Lord from blessings which the Lord has already written in the scriptures. So brethren, leave them alone. But let's concern ourselves with knowing the truth and shunning them. Blasting them from every angle is hurting us, brethren. And unbelievers, we take advantage of that. And we think everyone with the media will also make a show of them all over the media. Look at what is going on. The media are picking them up. But brethren, we need to be strong at this time. Mordecai said to Esther, don't keep quiet. Because if anything happened to the Jews, you are still one of them. So pray. Brethren, we should pray. You know, I watched one on the television. He says, oh, all these black churches. Brethren, it is not so. Taste does not respect color, race, nation, tongue, or tribe. As long as there is a farm, they will grow. Whether it's in Philippines, they will grow. Whether it's in the West, they will grow. Whether it's in Africa, they will grow. Whether it's in Asia, they will grow. They don't respect 
any of those. So people coming to say, oh, is this black churches or white churches? You're making a big mistake. That's why the law says, leave them alone. You will root out. You are going to go off course. Set and planted them. Don't forget. The Bible says the enemy planted and went away. Satan planted them and subtly went away so that we will be busy fighting them instead of reaching out to the lost. He wants to get us occupied with fighting them, fighting them. Brethren, let's get busy. Jesus is coming very soon. The time is far gone. Brethren, this is the time to start getting ourselves ready for the return of Yeshua. The king is coming and Satan wants to use this false prophets to distract us, brethren. Let's get on with our business. Let's get on in righteousness. Let's get on in keeping ourselves, getting ourselves ready. Brethren, please note that you can't root them out if that will help you. They will stay to the end because they are meant for the fire. Mm. They are the things that will be that will facilitate the fire to ignite. You know, as you put wood into the fire and it keeps glowing. Mm. So don't do anything yet. Just keep praying. They are ordained for condemnation. Just do what Yeshua did in Matthew chapter 24 and 25. Read it all through. You will get strength. You will get strong. And we will continue. We will work stronger and stronger more than them. Pray against their influence. Don't imitate them. Please, younger preachers, older preachers, anyone, don't imitate them. Don't dress like them. Don't talk like them. Don't do showbiz like them. Don't you use their words. Don't you use these fake Bibles that almost everything in it is out. And they try to water it so down that you're reading the Bible. You don't even know whether you're reading a storybook or the word. The Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful. It jumps out and hits. It jumps out and cuts across. But they have these Bibles. You're reading it. It's like water. They say it's all easy. Brethren, don't imitate them. Don't join them. Don't sow into them. They are hard grounds. They will never yield any fruit. You're wasting everything. You're sowing into them. Don't let them in once you notice who they are. Once you, yes, Michael Opara, that we know, says, first fool, no be fool. That's a Nigerian pidgin English. First fool, no be fool. Second fool is proper foolish. Don't let them get you the second time. The spirit in you will bear witness mm. that they are not of us. Mm. And you push them to one side and keep going and concentrate on those who are making it to heaven, not those who have no plan, who are deceiving themselves. Don't be a partaker of their evil. If you share their tract, say yes to them, click yes to them on Facebook, you are promoting them. If you're sharing their messages, you are promoting them. Brethren, let's leave them and let's concentrate on winning souls. Let's concentrate on praying for our nations, on praying for our people, on reaching out and showing examples. Finally, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, the Bible says, Nevertheless, mm -hmm. the foundation of God standed sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Father, we thank you today and we bless you. Thank you for your word. Your word is beautiful. Your word is sweet. Your word is wonderful. Father, Lord, we have enough of the word. We have a lot to dwell in than to mind these fake preachers. Lord, we know their gimmick is to bring distraction to the church so that the church will start fighting them and leave off the work of reconciling souls, the work of looking inward to get ourselves ready for your coming. Father, our prayer is that no remnant will be deceived or shall be deceived by these tears in the name of Yeshua. And even in churches where they have dwelt in, where they have settled in, Father, we pray that no remnant will be deceived. You will keep us strong. Thank you, Lord, for having heard and answered our prayers. Man, brethren, please let's share this to everyone. Let the church in, in everywhere in the whole world know this. Thank you, and may the Lord bless you. Amen.